In the realm of the mysterious and unexplained looms the extraordinary popularity of that slap-happy trio known as the Three Stooges. Hello, this is Grover Silcox. That much of the material we'll be presenting about the Stooges tonight has never been shown on television before. Back in, with Moore in search of the Three Stooges right after this. Curly. Really? What can you do a curly impression? <laughs> Call the medical van. Continues right after this. For the untold story behind the Stooges, we spoke with Larry Fine's sister Lila and her husband Nate Budnick. Lila, first question for you is, uh, what was it like to be the sister of, of Larry Fine, the middle Stooge? Oh, it was uh, it was very nice having him for a brother. He was a kind man. Uh, he, he was uh, always very good to me. Uh, my father died when I was five, and Larry, being 18 years older than me, was at that time 23. Mm -hmm. And so he, he was really a father figure more than just a brother. I know Larry was an accomplished violinist. Now, did he keep that up uh, through the years? Was he, he able to play? Uh, play, yes. He played. He fooled around with his violin. He had played in youth concerts as a child. He was being prepared uh, to become a concert violinist. Did they ever get hurt from any other antics? Yes. The, Mo, uh, they were filming a picture where uh, Mo was standing on a on some boards. Lila, how many of the gags that the boys did came about by accident? Curly was not one to remember lines, and there were many times when he could not remember what he was supposed to say, and so he just stood there and he went, woo, 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 woo. Curly uh, had one leg slightly shorter than the other, and he walked with a slight limp, and so when he, he used to do little things so that people wouldn't notice it, mm -hmm. and that's really how that Curly shuffle business started, and uh, he would make the sound, move his hands and then move the leg back and that put those three things together and you got the curly shuffle you are watching in search of the three stooges welcome back my name is grover silcox now the three stooges go west as cowboys in murray mavericks with the in search we'll be right back with in search of the three stooges right with, the, with the search in search of oh. the three stooges to chat with Joe Besser, who filled Shemp's shoes from 1956 to 1958. Joe, you're out in sunny California. Yeah, and you're in Philadelphia, right. the town that I loved. Uh-huh, you performed here many times. Uh, many, many, many times. Uh, one question I'd like to ask right off the bat, Joe. How did you get to be a, a one of the Three Stooges? They came to me when, when Shemp passed away, which I was a very, he was a very dear friend, mm. Shemp. You were close friends. We were, we were all close friends. Shemp, Shemp uh, passed away, and they asked me if I would join them. They have two more years on their contract mm -hmm. to, to, uh, before they left, you know? So I, I was very happy to do it with them because I liked the boys anyway. Larry, Larry was a wonderful guy. Mo was wonderful. What's the key that makes them a success even today? It was good comedy. One thing about it was clean. Well, it's been great talking to you, Joe, and uh, it's a real thrill. Would you do me a favor? Sure. And give Philadelphia my love, because I did love Philadelphia and still do. I know Philadelphia has a lot of love for you, too. And, uh, again, thanks for talking to us. It was a pleasure. And, and good health and good luck to you. Thank you. Go and good it. luck, whatever you're doing. Thank you. So long, Tom. Right. Bye-bye now, Joe. Mo and Larry are joined by Joe Besser in this extraterrestrial comedy, Spaceship Sappy. Can you do the shuffle by any chance? The curly shuffle, you should no, be able to. I seen it. I seen it done, but I can't. It was Kelly. Tell <laughs> me again. It, I thought it was Herman Levine. And I think it is. Herman, what do you think of the Three Stooges? Oh, they're lousy. <laughs> <laughs> Stooge character actor Emil Sitka on the line. Hello. Hello there. Emil Sitka. That's right. Who's this? This is Grover Silcox. Wow, what a name. If I played a part with the Stooges with that name, man, we'd have a field day. <laughs> Grover, what's on your mind? Well, I'm glad you asked, Emil. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, why do you work so well as a, a character actor with the Stooges? Not for the pay, and not because it was a big thrill like that, but because I did it pretty good. We have uh, one of your, uh, lots of your films here, uh, Who Done It is one of them, in which you played Old Man Goodrich. Right, the councilman. Sure, can you do that impression for us? Well, let's see. Hey, they tied me up and made me listen to singing commercials, and I'm a lover of fine music. I thought I'd go mad. Mad! <laughs> Holy God. I feel like contributing to Medicare after that. (laughs) Um, Three Stooges in Orbit. How about that one? Do you remember that? Three Stooges in Orbit is the absolute favorite role, but it wasn't all funny. It was a combination of sympathy, dramatic, and comedy. And I liked it because I was actually co-starred with them. And uh, it was a... I liked that role very much. Mm -hmm. But you took a lot of pies, too, didn't you, Amo? Yeah, a lot of pies. And believe me, the first one was a real shocker. Mm Mm-hmm constant resurgence of, of popularity. The reason that they appeal, I think, is because uh, from the child to the adult, they do the ridiculous things that we don't dare do and can't avoid doing. Well. So now what else you got to ask me? Anything else? Amo, that's basically all the time we have. Uh, I'm going to have to say uh, goodbye to you and thank you for uh, helping us out here on this uh, special program. Let's meet old man Goodrich in person, along with the Stooges in Who Done It. We'll be right back with more of In Search of the Three Stooges in just a few moments. Hey, I love that Pepsi commercial. Thank you. (laughs) Things okay now? Everything's okay now. (laughs) Nice. What does he cover? (laughs) Terrific, (laughs) Bob. Yeah, that's nice. You work around here? Yeah, I work over at the gallery, Butler Shoes. We'll be back with more of In Search of the Three Stooges right after this. We'll be back with more In Search of the Three Stooges right after this. Hi, what's your name? My name is Tim. Tim, uh, were you at Woodstock with the Stooges by any chance? Um, I missed that one by about a month. I saw them later at Altamont. I see. So Three Stooges will be right back. Okay. To know if there's a connection between psychic phenomenon and the Three Stooges. Well, we asked Dr. James Tam, visiting professor at the University of Pennsylvania, to be with us and give us his expert opinion. Well, of course, uh, everyone knows the uh, Three Stooges, or uh, Les Trois Stooges, as they're known in France, Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to being world-renowned comedians, were uh, uh, members of an elite group of scientists who explored psychic phenomenon. In fact, uh, they were intimates of Albert Einstein. Uh, We have a letter from Einstein where he says that uh, uh, he wanted to replace Laddie, uh, saying that he, Einstein, was twice as funny as uh, Moore and Curly combined, or uh, E equals MC squared, as he put it. Uh, But uh, we know that the the, uh, Stooges knew all about acupuncture, all about uh, psychic energies, and all about martial arts and human auras, which... Uh, allowed them to hit each other with great force without hurting one another. You'll notice them feeling the auras before Mm. they do it. In fact, there's a whole school of uh, Kirlian uh, photographers Mm. behind the Iron Curtain who are studying uh, the auras that are given off from the movies and how to bend a fork without touching it, just passing your hand over it going... That's absolutely amazing, Dr. Tam. Thank you for giving us that testimony here today. Dr. Tam, Dr. James Tam, University of Pennsylvania. Next up, Termites of 1938, where our boys are exterminators who are mistaken for an escort service. It starts Friday at Eric's Mark 1. Well, how many are they singing? When they're singing, hello, hello, hello. And who wrote and directed Stooge Films. Ed, you directed the Stooges for how many years? Seven years, years 45 to 52. How do you direct three guys who are slapping faces, clobbering heads, ripping out hair, and poking eyes? Well, the Stooges may have appeared to be disorganized uh, idiots on the screen, but actually they were uh, well-organized uh, 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 troopers. Now, Mo was a highly intelligent, uh, highly conscientious actor, and the boss of the boys on... Uh, off the stage as well as on. The way I preferred to work with them was to cooperate before filming began. When I wrote a script, I would mm-hmm. call them in and discuss it, not just to get their approval, but to, to get their cooperation. Tell us a little bit about the bazooka incident in the uh, uh, tr- three troubadours. 
three trouble doors. Trouble doors. I'm sorry, I guess. No improvised the bazooka, but the special effects man uh, used too much compressed air and blasted this lamp black into his face. And the first aid man had to actually pry Moe's eyelids open to scrape out the chunks of lamp black. Tell us a little bit about Microphonies, which you wrote uh, as well as directed. Leonard Malton, in one of his books, uh, calls it the best they ever made. And Gary Deeb, the critic for the Chicago Sun-Times, uh, says more or less... The same thing. Well, thanks for talking to us. It was a lot of fun, I can say that. <laughs> and that's what counts in the end, I guess. And now for Ed Burns' Microphonies. More stew stuff after this. <laughs> more of the three stooges in, in, the, in the search of the three stooges. I'm playing Anthony. Here, 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 Arnold. Did you get that this time? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. We'll be right back with more of In Search of the Three Stooges in just a few moments. Uh, yeah. What do you think of the Three Stooges? I think they're pretty funny, and I think they're very, they're very good. I don't know if we've solved any mysteries tonight, but one thing I do know is that the Stooges still continue to make us laugh, and that is no mystery.